Are you stuck in a situation where you feel torn between feeling that you have to or that you need to forgive someone and also honoring perhaps that there's a part of you that's not ready to forgive? Now, instead of honoring your true feelings, you try to fit yourself into what I would call the forgiveness box. Sounds familiar? Stay tuned as today I'm going to be talking about why forgiveness can become a trap. Hi, my name is Yvette Rose, author and founder of Metaphysical Anatomy, which is a book of 679 medical ailments and also the hidden emotional stress messages behind them that we all share universally. And welcome to today's topic, which is about forgiveness is a trap. Now, this is a very interesting topic for me. And, you know, I decided to talk about it because of how this process emotionally tortured me. I tortured myself, right? Especially when I tried to align myself with a process that I was not ready for. Now, I've come to learn that forgiveness is not just something that you force, right? It's not something that you can just, uh, it just happens, right? You can't force it. Now, for example, let's say you're guided or that you're told that you have to forgive because it's the right thing to do. Now, in that case, it always made me wonder where does that leave the concept of what's do of doing what is right for you? Right, so holding on to anger is a choice, right? You always have free will. And of course, you know, anger is and always has been emotionally, physically, and mentally harmful. But it's also a choice on your part as to how long you want to hold on to that. Now, you cannot learn to forgive in a course or in a seminar, you know, forgiveness in my opinion, is a spontaneous action and also a reaction that happens when you really truly understand what happened in the past and also the pain that has been caused by certain circumstances or people as well, but as well as also understanding how you reacted to it because you also then in that case healed the wounds, right? You healed the wounds caused by people or someone or by circumstances. Now, in some cases, for example, as well as where the reason is now why letting go can be so hard, right? It's because sometimes someone can do something, right? And it triggers, and, and they do it to you. And it triggers a very deep underlying unresolved wound from an earlier traumatic time in your life, which then it magnifies the recent challenges that you face with someone, right? So that's an example. So now, then you can also try to heal the recent challenges that you faced. However, it does not deal with the wound that was triggered from an earlier similar trauma, right? So for example, now it still doesn't mean, for example, that you necessarily have to accept something that happened to you. Now that, and especially now that challenged you emotionally or physically, it just means that it will help you to set you free and also help you to heal as well as then how in these unjustful circumstances made you feel. And also it is through that healing that you will gain mental clarity because you're not looking at the world through the eyes that are tainted with pain and also old trauma. Now that healing then, right, that healing will shift how you see yourself and also others, especially from your past circumstances. Now, it's almost like, you know, it's like when you're angry and you don't see happiness around you, right? You don't have much tolerance for people who are, for example, also irritating you. But when you're happy, when you're rested, you see the world very differently. It's much easier than to shake off irritating people and actions. You see, when you heal yourself, when you are in a place of clarity, it changes how you filter in your reality and what you focus on. The reason why forgiveness is also so hard is that deep down, what you're really fighting against is the anger, right? Anger because of a need now that you have to heal yourself because of what someone else did. Right, so this also triggers all feelings of injustice. So when it comes to forced forgiveness, you might have now realized how challenging it is to let go of feelings of injustice, right? Especially to your identity and to forgive someone for wounding your sense of self. Now, 
who you are and also what you stand for and what you are worthy of has been deeply challenged. Now, anger that is felt, right? That is the anger because of overstep boundaries, meaning also that your boundaries and then feeling powerless to claim your right to express your boundaries and to also to claim your right to be respected in terms of the circumstances that made you feel like you still have to fight for something, right? You had to fight or perhaps you could be the opposite. You could be the peacekeeper. You became passive, right? But anger is always still there. So in summary, what you are still fighting for and holding on to is the aftermath of what had happened, right? And now you're stuck, for example, in like a roundabout, right? A roundabout of thoughts of what could have been done during that moment that deeply challenged you and also left you feeling wounded and also marks of injustice. Now, what makes you also feel so powerless deep down is that the past does not exist anymore. Right? It's that little piece of memories in your subconscious mind and also the emotional body that is now stuck and it keeps the traumatic memories alive. And I honestly don't also believe that you have to forgive someone else's actions. Right? It's not your job to take responsibility for someone else's actions. Now, there are so many mentors out there that saying, for example, that you have to take responsibility for the part that you played as well. And well, you know, say that to a rape victim. <laughs> You know, this is, you know, this is someone who was, or say that to someone, for example, you know, who was shot and they nearly died. Someone who was in an accident as a result of a drunk driver, right? Someone once said to me even as well that I have to take responsibility for the role that I played when I was sexually abused as a child. I was four years old. So, you know, you see my point. As a four-year-old child, you're not responsible for someone else's actions. And hence also why I wrote the book, Finding Your Own Voice. It was a very big catalyst there for me behind that. So if you're interested in that, is that something that's also in your past? I highly recommend that you read it. So in this case, coming back to responsibility, right? So you don't have to take responsibility for someone else's mistakes. That is my point. I repeat, you don't have to take responsibility for someone else's mistakes and them failing to take responsibility for their actions. That is not your fault and it is not your problem. You're not standing in their shoes. You're not dictating their lives. You have nothing to do with their life path and how they choose to live their life. That is their decision. Now, healing in this case, it is about you, right? It is your journey and it is about you claiming your quality of life back. And the problem with forgiveness is that it becomes a trap when you are guided into the forgiveness process, when you are not ready. It is the expectation or even the pressure from, say, religion, mentors, or even society that triggers this deep resentment and also almost feeling like you can become a victim of the forgiveness process, right? Especially when you're not ready to forgive. And that is okay. Now, that is a trap that so many people fall into and you can also, at any time when you feel ready, consciously and actively take steps to take your power back, right? And you can turn your life around and take your quality of life back within a split second, regardless of what others do or say. Because ultimately, your reality is not their reality. And that means that your reality is your playground and you can do with it whatever you want. Right? It is your place and space to create and to recreate what you want. Right? Especially if something doesn't work for you, then you have the freedom to recreate what it is that you feel in alignment with. Right? Because I've noticed that forgiveness is taught and projected in a way that requires action. Meaning, say, like an action that is in most cases not in alignment with where you are at in your healing journey. There is a misalignment. Because when you're trying to forgive and you're not ready, you are actually in a place of feeling emotionally or even physically wounded. And now you're trying to skip, you're trying to skip a step and you're trying to take yourself from here to moving to here and to align yourself with a mindset that is healed when you're not healed. And that is when forgiveness becomes a trap. So you see, while you're still in that woundless place, 
is not going to work. You can intellectually trick yourself and tell yourself over and over again, I forgive, I forgive, I feel peaceful, but it doesn't mean that your emotional body is going to line up with your thoughts, right? Because the traumatic memories are still there. They haven't been dealt with. They haven't been looked at. So what can also now happen here is that it can cause you to invalidate a very important, and in most cases, a very important healing journey, not just you, but your healing journey. So what happens is that instead of focusing on your healing journey, you divert and you shift your focus to trying to change your mindset about how you feel about someone when in reality you feel quite the opposite. So your current state could also be in a place of, let's say, anger and resentment. And I say that because, because of injustice, right? Because of injustice. And anger also is being brought to life through the concept of forgiveness when you are not ready. So we create this form, right? We create this form now that is as a result of the actions and also the thinking that it's the only way to heal. So out of desperation, thinking that if I forgive, I will heal. Guys, you're doing it backwards, right? So forgiveness tends to translate then into not making your healing journey about your unique healing journey. But it involves trying to understand someone else's wrongdoing, something that is the other party's responsibility. It's not your responsibility to understand their actions, right? You're not their psychologist. So what you will automatically demonstrate once you've healed is compassion. You'll have a sense of compassion towards someone who caused you pain, right? So the final conclusion here is that forgiveness is healthy, of course, but only when you start it off by making it about yourself first, right? So once you've done that, everything else that you, for example, would learn and say a two, three day event, right? Especially 20 steps how to forgive will just spontaneously fall into place through a mental and emotional clarity and that can actually happen within one second right so without any effort of any further part on your part so if there is something that happened in your past that you feel that you're having trouble letting go of then I would highly recommend that you go through my online free healing guided session at guidedhealingsession.com so guys remember to subscribe to my youtube channel at Yvette videos and until next time be the light that you are Hi guys, thank you for joining me and remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy on Amazon 679 Medical Ailments and I also wrote about the psychosomatic root causes of that and I'm spoiling you because I even added key points for you to start looking at important questions that you can ask yourself to start improving your quality of life and also remember to catch me on Instagram Yvette Rose 1 with the digit 1 and Metaphysical Anatomy on our Facebook fan page. Bye guys!